just like in our last video, let's just get this out of the way. Venomous and poisonous are not the same thing. I challenge you to look up the most poisonous animals in the world and find a list that isn't at least half composed of venomous animals. After hours of looking, I now pity toxicologists and what they must go through. Both venomous and poisonous animals produce toxins, but what makes them different is the method of delivery. Venomous animals must inject toxins into their prey, while poisonous animals release their toxins into, onto, or around a potential predator. Duo Fish In comparison to venomous animals, poisonous animals are far and few between. It turns out having to get halfway eaten before potentially harming a predator isn't an incredibly popular adaptation in the animal world. But the animals who manage to stick it out utilize some of the most lethal toxins on the planet. The animals on this list are ordered by increasing oral lethal dose 50%. So the further up the list we go, the smaller the amount of toxin it would take for your body to fade to room temperature. Number 15. The Cane Toad This large species of toad can grow to be larger than your hand and produces some of the most poisonous toxins in the world with an LD50 clocking in at 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram. If you happen to have a dollar bill or small paperclip near you, go ahead and pick it up. You're holding something that weighs about 1 gram, which is 1,000 times heavier than a milligram. The bufo toxins that the cane toad carries can kill 50% of mice with just one milligram, and most other animals, including humans, can die to amounts of less than 100. And this is the least poisonous animal on the list. Cane toads were introduced to Australia because of their ability to control pests around sugarcane, but their numbers quickly exploded into the millions because they lack a good amount of natural predators in Australia of all places. Venomous snakes, lizards, and even crocodiles will die of consuming the toxic toads, so be sure to wash your hands if you ever handle one of these resilient toads. Number 14. Spanish Fly Oh no, you didn't mishear me. Spanish Fly isn't a fly, or even some back alley vial of ground up rhino horn offered to you by a vendor promising unlimited promiscuity. It's an emerald green beetle that's part of a family of blister beetles and just so happens to produce a poison with an LD50 of 0.5 milligrams per kilogram. Spanish fly, along with over 7,500 other species of blister beetle, produce a toxin known as cantharidin that acts as a form of defense against hungry predators. Since the time of ancient Greeks, crushed blister beetles have been used for various folk medicines, including use as an aphrodisiac. The cantharidin produced by Spanish fly and other blister beetles is absorbed by the skin and leads to blistering and burning pain. When consumed, it wreaks havoc on the body, causing ulcers, blistering, and bleeding throughout the GI tract, which can be fatal. Of course, it can also cause priapism, much like the Brazilian wandering spider. But unfortunately, this is accompanied by bleeding, intense pain, and all-around misery in the area. Number 13 flamboyant cuttlefish. Arguably the cutest poisonous animal on this list, the flamboyant cuttlefish is a hamster-sized, fearless widow cutie with an LD50 of somewhere around 0.35 milligrams per kilogram, I think. Apparently it houses a toxin as deadly as the tetrodotoxin a blue-ringed octopus carries, which was number 15 on our venomous animals list. However, it isn't well studied and only Mark Norman, a very well-respected marine biologist mind you, has made the comparison. In any case, this adorable cuttlefish is one of only three cephalopods known to be venomous or poisonous and can be found in the sea around northern Australia and up towards New Guinea. Flamboyant cuttlefish walk along the ocean floor due to their shrunken cuttle bones, causing them reduced buoyancy. But what they lack in buoyancy, they make up for in flamboyancy. I know, it was terrible. When threatened by predators, these cephalopods flash a variety of colors and put up their dukes in an attempt to warn predators that they are dangerous. Considering their incredibly poisonous muscle tissue, I'd say it's a credible threat. It's too cute! It's, it's disgusting! Number 12. Xanthid Crabs This family of crabs doesn't really stand out any more than other crabs besides the bright colors that they display. 
However, these crabs have a symbiotic bacteria within them that produces tetrodotoxin with an LD50 of 0.334 milligrams per kilogram. Be forewarned, there are a lot of marine animals that use tetrodotoxin to their advantage. In fact, the next five animals on this list, including this one, have the same LD50. Luckily, some clever scientists created the mouse unit, or the amount of toxin needed to kill a mouse with a gram of the animal's flesh, which we will use for comparison. Xanthid crabs kill 9 mice for every gram of weight they have and are on the lower end of mouse units. Different genera and species of these crabs can be found on shores all over the world and even other worlds where they cause great grief to many people. Number 11. Combstar. Once again, we have a marine animal that uses tetrodotoxin as a form of protection from predators and has enough toxins in every gram of its flesh to kill 520 mice. I forgot to mention earlier that there is no known antidote for tetrodotoxin when talking about the crab, so be careful of what sea creatures you eat. The spines located on the sides of the Combstar's arms are used to help it dig through the sand so it can ingest detritus, dead fish, biofilm, and even small mollusks which it eats shell and all. They are excellent cleaners of the ocean floor and are popular in aquariums because of this, though could prove deadly if any fish in the aquarium wonder what it tastes like. Number 10. Rough Skinned Newt. These cute amphibians are one of only three poisonous salamanders known, but are by far the most poisonous of the three and can kill over 1,000 mice per gram of weight. That means that one newt could easily kill anything that tries to eat them, anything excluding the common garter snake. Oddly enough, garter snakes seem to be able to taste how much toxin individual newts have and only eat those with low amounts of toxin. But the fact that they can survive poisoning by tetrodotoxin is nevertheless incredible. Rough-skinned newts are plentiful in Northern California near water and can be safely handled as long as you don't try eating them. Something a drunken man in 1979 learned the hard way when he ate one on a dare before experiencing numbness and dying of cardiac arrest just two hours later. In his defense, it was a triple dog dare, so he was obligated to do it. Number 9 Ribbon worms. Ribbon worms are weird, and I mean really, really weird. The fact that some contain tetrodotoxin in amounts high enough to kill 25,590 mice per gram is tame in comparison to their other traits. A few of you have probably seen a video of this worm in action on YouTube once before. They are commonly called proboscis worms because they literally shoot out a part of their bodies which entangle and envenom prey. Yes, some of them are venomous too. Even weirder is the fact that, if out of water, ribbon worms are as fragile as wet paper and can fall apart by simply being lifted up. Apparently, falling apart doesn't bother them too much though as they can reproduce both sexually and by breaking segments off of their bodies. Like I said, really weird. Number 8 The Pufferfish Everyone viewing has probably heard of how poisonous pufferfish are, especially thanks to almost every poisonous animal list featuring them, among mostly venomous animals. However, they do have good reason to feature them as they contain enough toxin to kill 5 to 6 million mice per gram. Fugu, the Japanese word for pufferfish, has been eaten by Japanese people for centuries despite every fish containing well over the lethal dose of tetrodotoxin. Apparently, the liver is rumored to be the most delicious part of the fish, even though it contains the greatest amount of tetrodotoxin, leading me to believe that this was someone's attempt at a joke. In any case, today we understand that pufferfish are toxic due to the bacteria that they carry producing tetrodotoxin. So, a few fish farms in Japan are now raising non-toxic fugu that they keep away from the deadly bacteria they normally pick up in the ocean. Still, I can't imagine a plate of fish being potentially worth my life. Number 7 Rove Beetle Rove beetles, more specifically those a part of the Paterus genus, are very similar to blister beetles in that their hemolymph causes blisters if coming into contact with the skin. However, 
Peridin, the unique toxin that these beetles produce, has an LD50 of just 0.14 milligrams per kilogram, making it almost five times more poisonous than cantharidin. Rove beetles can be found in several countries all over the world and are particularly common on the eastern side of the United States. Rove beetles aren't really similar to what we picture the average beetle looking like. I think they look more like earwigs than beetles. In any case, the production of peridin is actually left up to female rove beetles which is used to defend her eggs from predators such as spiders. Peridin is a rather unique toxin. At levels as low as 1 nanogram per milliliter, it can shut down a cell's ability to divide by inhibiting the production of proteins and DNA. That's shutting down life at a fundamental level. Number 6 Hooded Pitahui Ever heard of a bird being toxic before? In 1992, a hooded Pitahui was discovered to have feathers coated in homobotrachotoxin, very similar to the same toxin found in poison dart frogs with an incredibly low LD50. For the life of me, I couldn't find a single study with patracotoxin given orally to any animal, only injections could be found. However, 0.12 to 0.5 milligrams per kilogram is expected to be the lethal dose for humans if taken orally. It is currently theorized that beetles in the Coracine family are responsible for the patracotoxin that the Pitahui are coated in. Interestingly, poison dart frogs are found in South America, placing them on the other side of the world in comparison to Pitahui, yet both use the same toxin. Hooded Pitahui are native to New Guinea and are called trash birds by the natives who refuse to eat them. Considering the fact that the birds smell like rancid milk, holding them causes numbness in the fingers, and eating them would kill you, it's an understandable name. Number 5 Golden Poison Dart Frog If you've ever seen a list about poisonous animals, you've certainly seen the poison dart frog usually featured as one of the most poisonous animals in the world. Not all poison dart frogs are alike though, and each species carries a varying amount of batrachotoxin on their bodies. However, the golden poison frog is the king when it comes to a coating of batrachotoxin, having up to 20 times more than other dart frogs. Phyllobates terribilis is the name given to this cute frog, and its poison skin is certainly terrible for anything that tries to eat it. You've definitely heard that poison dart frogs are used to coat darts with poison, but have you ever wondered how someone can eat an animal brought down by a poison dart? After all, the poison had to course through the animal's veins in order to kill it. The trachotoxin subcutaneous LD50 is incredibly low at 2 to 3 micrograms per kilogram, but its oral LD50 is much higher at around 0.12 to 0.5 milligrams per kilogram, meaning that the small amount of toxin coating the dart is dilute enough that it won't kill hunters. Still, don't try to swallow a poison dart frog. It will still definitely kill you. Number 4 Beadlet anemone Beadlet anemone contain equinotoxins, which together have an LD50 of 33 micrograms per kilogram. This sort of feels like cheating, but beadlet anemone aren't just poisonous, they're also venomous. Both the mucus and stinging cells of the beadlet anemone contain equinotoxin, which is especially suited for the destruction of blood cells which animals need in order to carry oxygen through their bodies. However, the nematocytes that beadlet anemone produce can't seem to puncture human skin or the scales of larger fish, limiting lethal exposure to trying to eat one. Bizarrely, beadlet anemone are incredibly aggressive and territorial to a point that they will continually attack any anemone not of the same species until they leave. They can be found all over coast around the United Kingdom and as far south as South Africa and are another popular aquarium pet. Just make sure you don't try eating them. Number 3 Bunodosima granulifera At this point, we've reached poisons with toxicities higher than the deadliest of venoms. Granulifera anemone produce BGK toxin in their mucus which has an LD50 of just 4.5 micrograms per kilogram. That's 4.5 millionths of a gram or the weight of a paperclip. These small anemones can be found all over the coast of Cuba and really just want to stay alive. During the night, these anemones open up their tentacles and catch tiny prey, but during the day, or when threatened, 
They pull their tentacles inside of their bodies and release a thick mucus containing BGK into the water surrounding them. BGK is a neurotoxin which interrupts the potassium ion channels pretty much every animal has, so it's quite an effective defense for staying alive. Number 2 Palithoa toxica Palithoa is a genus of zooanthids, many of which produce one of the most toxic organic compounds on Earth with an LD50 of 0.4 micrograms per kilogram, known simply as palitoxin. Palitoxin disrupts the sodium ion pumps that pretty much every single cell in your body uses, making it especially deadly. It makes Finding Nemo suddenly way more metal. Do you want this anemone to sting you? Yes. Brush. <sighs> There's an ancient Hawaiian legend about palitoxin being created after a shark god was killed and his ashes thrown into a tide pool, which sprouted seaweed-like coral that, when used to coat spears, caused instant death to those hit by the spears. I would think that being impaled by an unpoisoned spear would have similar effects, but ancient Hawaiians had more experience in witnessing spear deaths than me. Sometimes, species of palithoa end up in aquariums and unfortunate owners may find themselves poisoned if they try removing the anemone. Palitoxin is the second most toxic non-protein known, second only to the toxin at number one on this list. Number one. Strated surgeonfish. How does having the symptoms of food poisoning for almost 20 years sound? Strated surgeon fish, as well as a few other species of fish, contain both matotoxin and ciguatoxin due to Gambier discus toxicus, a protist that makes a living near and on algae in the sea. The oral LD50 of both toxins together hasn't been thoroughly studied as of yet. However, it's thought that the LD50 for both should be somewhere around 0.2 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram. That's anywhere from 200 to 500 nanograms, making it the second or third most lethal organically produced toxin, behind botulinum toxin and perhaps tetanus toxins. Ciguatera fish poisoning affects 20,000 to 50,000 people a year thanks to these toxins infecting certain fish, and the resulting food poisoning can last from weeks to years. The symptoms can be so bad that it is sometimes misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis. The toxins can't even be removed by cooking, so if you happen to get a fish containing enough of the toxin, you could end up sick, or if the case is extreme enough, dead. So make sure to be careful about eating fish from imported tropical waters. As always, be sure to check the description for sources. Till next video, dos vidanya!